Good afternoon, everyone. Um, John Lamb down here at Las Vegas, Nevada with Kelly Stewart. We um, set through the morning and uh, we got some reporting to do what happened in jury selection. Uh, pretty boring, but um, there are a few interesting facts and we've got a long week ahead of us. So um, you'll be getting some reporting throughout the week every day down here of what's going on. Um, all four defendants were in the courtroom today. That's something we didn't know was going to happen yesterday. With what happened with the visits out there in Henderson, we were not able to see Ammon or Ryan Bundy. But today, all four of them were there. All four of them were dressed in prison clothes, kind of a bright orange, red color. And um, Ammon and Ryan still had Pahrump prison uniforms on that said detainee where um, Cliven and Ryan Payne, they had um, the same color, the red, but it was from Henderson Detention Center instead of Pahrump. So even the judge did not get that cleared up herself. She kept calling all of them, um, that all of them was wearing Pahrump prison clothes and she did not really know why. But um, so but all four defendants were there. There was a few arguments and motions. First thing, before the potential jurors were called in, and um, Morgan Philpot made a few points. One thing he made on record today is that he said that this shooting in Las Vegas that just happened here earlier in October, he feels and his team feels that it was directly involved with this trial. And he wanted to elaborate more. The judge shut him down and said, we'll discuss that later. But he says that he felt and his legal team felt that this shooting was involved and this trial should be put off and he was going to file another motion later today to be heard at one point this week to try to put the trial off further. Um, we know that Friday there's supposed to be a motion heard to dismiss the whole trial. So we're kind of just seeing what's happening here but there's a lot of things happening. We um, brought in like 76 potential jurors a day that are being um, um, question and things are going on and we're going to see if this um, in which one of them jurors going to be allowed to stay or any of these 76 jurors we have uh, several hundred we're going to go through this week and we'll see which one of them are actually going to be on this trial they did read off 1145 potential witness names um, a lot of them um, so we got we got, I got three pages just that I wrote down myself uh, Glenn Beck is one of them, Michael Dennis Lynch again, Michelle Fiore, we've got uh, Lombardo, the sheriff of Clark County. Um, and one thing that was interesting there before I forget that is that Lombardo is a witness here and he's going to be brought in as he has been before. Juror number one, the very first juror on the list is friends with Lombardo, even had um, dinner with him this past Sunday and he's still sitting on as a potential juror at this moment um, this you can't make this kind of stuff up this the kind of thing that it, it they should have caught that before he was ever called in that he was friends for the last several years he goes to the shooting range with Lombardo um, and here he is on the witness list I know you right. wrote out a bunch of names the, the other, the other um, potential juror that stood out to me was the one who works at the assessor's office and his, uh, her boss is a on the witness list, and the judge asked if that would be a problem for her to be unbiased in judging the testimony of her boss. And she said, no, she didn't think she would be unbiased when she's judging the testimony of her own boss. I don't know about you, but I'd have a very difficult time accusing my own boss of lying on the witness stand if I was a juror. So I think that one should have been pulled immediately that as well. That is juror number six. Right. So the very first few handful of jurors, juror number one, juror number five, juror number six, um, right there on the very first row were already had signs of bias and right. have signs of problems here with this case. And um, you know, how can that happen in a potential of hundreds and thousands of jurors that have been pulled they've from been, Clark County? They've already been pre-scanned. So these, these, some of these jurors should have already been pulled out and shouldn't even be in the courtroom today. I have a list of the juror numbers that the the defense team is asking to get rid of before we ever even started talking to these jurors. Juror number six, juror number seven, juror number 26, 34, 45, 46, 51, 49, 71, 
uh, 66, 64. Those here, the defense team asked for those jurors to be removed and excluded before we ever started. They said if these jurors are asked the wrong question, they could um, uh, taint the rest of these potential jurors because they already have showed signs of bias. Uh, one had, like we said, uh, dinner with uh, Lombardo just this past Sunday and um, he's still sitting among these jurors and uh, these other potential jurors. He even said over, I noticed he, he turned and talked to juror number two during, the, during this after they had found out that he had um, had dinner with um, Lombardo last Sunday and he's sitting there talking to juror number two. Um, this should have never happened. They should have been pulled, but the judge again allowed these potential uh, biased jurors to set among the other jurors. And so that's just some of what we're seeing. Um, each, one of the each one of the defendants, uh, Cliven, Ryan Bundy, and Ammon, and Ryan Payne were all asked to um, why they were wearing their jail clothes. And uh, each one of them says they just chose to. They were all shackled in the courtroom today in front of these potential jurors. The judge, uh, Ryan Bundy, made a good point about that. He says uh, he re was requesting his shackles to be removed before the potential jurors come in. And the judge says, well, you're wearing jail clothes. I don't think it really matters much. They can tell you're a detainee and you're, you're, you're in custody. So um, we're going to leave you in shackles. That, that's so important to remember is because you can be detained because you're either a threat to the public or you could be detained because you're a flight risk. So simply wearing their j jail clothes does not mean that they are a threat, they're dangerous to the public. While having shackles on your legs would imply that you are a threat and you cannot even be present with marshals all around you without being restricted by these chains. So I think that creates a huge bias right there for these jurors to see these men all in the leg irons. I think that's absolutely wrong. The judge did make one point there. She said that um, your actions last week, I feel that you should have to wear them today, but I may make up my mind tomorrow if things go good. Mm -hmm. She's punishing them and making them wear leg irons, not because they're a, a safety risk, because it's a punishment. She's trying to prove a point with them. She's trying to humble them down to where she, they're submissive to her. And, um, and she keeps telling them over and over again, you will be put in the holding cell if you do anything out of the ordinary, out of wrong, or look at uh, one of the back of the audience. They were under strict orders today not to look at none of us observers in the audience or even talk to us or smile at us. So. I did notice at the end, though, when they turned around to show respect to the jurors as they left, I noticed how dark Ammon's eyes were. His eye sockets were really sunk in compared to some of the others. And uh, I mean, almost like they were black eyes. I don't think they were black eyes, but that's how dark they looked. And all of them from the back, of course, look horribly thin. Clive and Bundy looks like he's aged 30 years, which, you know, that's a lot when you're already in your 70s. Since he's been detained, he's deteriorating rapidly, which is, you know, a, a very important reason why our Bill of Rights grants us bail, so that we can actually adequately be out preparing for trial, unless we have committed a capital offense or murdered somebody. But, but these men are, are being treated as though they've murdered somebody, and that is going to hinder them heading into this trial, not being as prepared, being malnourished, uh, looking the way that they do. It's, it's really uh, an injustice right now to our Bill of Rights and to our country, the way that these detainees are being taken. So hopefully here after lunch, we'll uh, find out which of these potential jurors are going to be released and not being used. And then we're going to get another batch of 70 to 80 new jurors, uh, potential jurors to uh, do the same thing we did this morning. And we're going to try to do that every day this week through Wednesday and maybe Thursday. And the judge said if it needs to be, we'll even go into Monday uh, selecting these new jurors. We did get um, on a turn. Uh, a, a date kind of schedule for uh, when all courts going to be all the way in through February. They are planning up into far as February the 20th for this court date possibly the last. Um, she was preparing these potential jurors to prepare for that. And so the month of uh, November, November, the whole month of December, January, and all the way almost through February possible. We've got several dark days. We've got December 4th, if anybody's planning on traveling here during that time, December 4th, that whole week is dark. We won't have any court that, other than that, there will just be um, just different days around the holidays, such as Thanksgiving or Christmas. But December 4th, that whole week is dark. Anytime there's a dark day, the following day, such as um, we won't have any court on 
the Monday following that, but Tuesday, um, the following Tuesday, we will start at 10 a.m. after a dark day um, on every single day that uh, the following day is dark. So that's about all I have. I don't know, do you have anything else, Kelly? Um, I could read off just a few of the names that surprised me that were on the witness yes. list, uh, maybe. And I also want to point one thing out. Um, our, our law enforcement uh, used to be to protect the people. And I want to point out to you guys right now that, that when I got out of my car, I, there was maybe 60 officers in SWAT that were around the back of the building and two blocks down. And, um, and then uh, here right now around the Fort Palace, we have officers everywhere armed, surrounding us, walking everywhere, looking us up and down, making sure we're not uh, doing anything wrong. And as somebody who's always been a law-abiding citizen um, and, and really wants to see police officers as here to protect me, it's becoming more and more clear that the police officers that are here on site are really here to protect the establishment. They're here to protect this courthouse. They're here to protect uh, any tyranny that's going on inside of this courthouse, and they will quickly remove the people if we start to do anything outside of their codes and regulations. And, and so just as somebody from the public, if you come to witness this trial, expect to have a heavy, heavy police presence everywhere around this courthouse and understand that as much as we want them to be here to keep us safe and protect us, you will likely feel very intimidated. So watch what you do, watch what you say, watch what you wear, uh, because they are looking for any reason to remove people away here from, from the throne that they've got established at this federal courthouse. What were uh, some of them names? You were so the names, um, they had Adam Kokesh, um, yeah, I'm, so they I'm had John Lamb. <laughs> on the witness list, so we're going to see how that goes. I might not be able to attend this trial, but right. we're going to try to change that because right. I'm trying to report here. Yeah, since this is an ongoing conspiracy, they can truly add anybody to this list that they want. They had Deb Jordan, Bill Keebler, uh, Gary Hunt. Uh, they did say Brian Cavalier, Blaine Cooper, uh, Jeanette Finnecombe. Um, let's Anthony see. Bosworth. Anthony Bosworth. Here's something good just to interject. Maxine... Bernstein is here from the Oregonian, from yes. Oregon Live, and I told her, I said, I am so happy to see you. She said, don't get too excited. I won't be here every day, but she said she's going to be here as much as she can, and if we let her know ahead of time when big witnesses are taking the stand, she will make sure to be here, which that really helps. The more um, attention you can bring to a situation, we all know that uh, sunlight is the best disinfectant, so having her here at some point it doesn't matter um, if somebody is maybe a little bent one way or the other when they're reporting that's what we want to see so she's going to be getting the attention all the way back down into portland for us uh, keeping the the topic of the mondays and the federal overreach and the land issues um, in the forefront of everybody's mind so i was really really happy to to see that um, and i'll see if there's any other names some of these other names we've got lou dobbs uh, we've got um, brandon curtis We've got Doug Gillespie, which we know who is, Michelle Fiore, uh, Michael Flynn again. We've got Daniel P. Love, which, yes. you know, all of our hearts left with joy, even if he won't be called. Of course, we love just hearing that he is a potential witness, of course, should be the lead witness in this case, but he probably won't be. There was Harry, Ray, uh, Harry, Harry Reed, Cope Reynolds, Ken Rhodes, Stuart Rhodes, uh, Mark McConnell, which, of course, hearing his name in court made my stomach just turned because the last time we heard his name in court was in Oregon when we learned he was a federal informant or an informant for the FBI um, surrounding the assassination and the ambush um, back last January in 2016 from the refuge. Uh, Dwayne Schrock, um, Jamie Spears, Carol O'Shaughnessy, Eric Parker, Jason Patrick, Ron um, Paul, Ron Paul, Ron Paul. Uh, Renee Powers, uh, Victoria Sharp, Shelley, and Tony Shelton. I mean, over a thousand people. One reporter Alex sitting. Alex Jones. Alex Jones. Uh, one reporter next to me whispered to the other one and said, "If you ain't on this list, you ain't nobody." Because <laughs> they have everybody on this list. Eleven hundred and forty-five names yeah. were read the day. Yeah, they said, "I've never seen a witness list like this. I've never seen a case like this that we had to take this many hours to go over the potential witness list." Jason Patrick's even on this. Um, so we've got a we got a we got a long list of names. We've got Sheriff just, Mac, Angus McIntosh. Barely touching Gavin Sign. Gavin, Nathan Sign, since they were both there. Yeah, it, lots um, of lots of people. So we got a lot. So I guess that wraps it up for really what we what we heard and seen in there today. We'll try to have you one more live stream this afternoon after the last of this is all over with. It's going to be pretty boring the next few days, it looks like. It We're is. probably going to go over the same thing that just happened today for the next three to four days. And then Friday is going to be the really big day. And um, that's when some 
really important hearings um, and motions are going to be heard and that could change this whole case just on Friday. So mm -hmm. let's pray for that day. Yep. Another thing, um, I talked to Carol Bundy shortly. You've seen the pictures possibly on Facebook of the flagpoles out at the Bundy Ranch. And Carol, they're going to get some new flags or if somebody has some, some nice big flags they want to donate maybe out there, we're going to have a day that we're going to have a group of people go out there either on a Friday or a Saturday and we're going to raise some flags up on those flagpoles. So if anybody wants to be a part of that, or has some nice flags that we could use out there at the Bundy Ranch, that'd be welcome. There's two great big 100 foot plus flagpoles out there. Um, I know we want to get probably a, a Nevada, state of Nevada flag and hang out there and what's what Cliven wanted. So if you got any suggestions or we'll, we'll try to let you know the day we do that, but probably it was one Friday or one Saturday, we're gonna plan that. So other than that, keep us in prayer. Um, come down here, you can and support uh, these defendants uh, it's going to be a long next three to four months and we can use all the support you can give us yep. That's it. god bless guys